Dunhuang in northwestern China, the fabled oasis town on the ancient Silk Road. Has fascinated people with the splendor of its wall paintings, the merchants ringing camel bells, and its history and legend shrouded in mystery. But few has realized that such magnificent historical legacy has resulted to a large extent from Dunhuang's distinctive natural surroundings. Located in the northwest of Gansu province, Dunhuang is where Gansu, King He, and Xingjian meet. The winds from the Kumutag Desert in the west carry millennium old sands in constant assaults on the town. Meanwhile, the Shul River nurtures it with water from the snow mountains. The stream flows through the eastern desert to produce rivers and wetlands. These together serve as the last defense for ecological balance in western Gansu. Water is the fundamental condition for all life to exist and endure. With high temperatures through the year and an annual precipitation below 39 millimeters, the Gobi Desert is a parched land. Faced with such a harsh environment, only the most tenacious and adaptable species can manage to survive and multiply. Chevalsky's horse is an ancient clan around here. With an evolution history of 60 million years. These are the last wild horses on Earth. They've witnessed the history of the land and become the living fossils among wild horses. As a highly socialized herd species, they follow a strict hierarchy. Usually with a male monarch as the leader. Each herd has its own turf. Stable social relations and coordinated efforts are the secrets that have sustained the species in the harsh desert environment. This herd is traveling through the Gobi Desert in quest of more food and water. The brief tranquility is to be shattered by an unexpected guest. Not far away in the desert, a young and strong male is approaching. Scent soon alerts the old king to the menacing stranger.
the young male has been driven out of its herd once it turned three and became an adult. The solitary roaming has given it an impressive physique. Now it is time to fight and acquire its own herd. To possess their own turf and a stable clan and mating rights is an aspiration shared by all males. The outsider is launching its attack at the elderly monarch. But its advance is effortlessly thwarted. And ends in failure. To counter brute force, the old monarch has deployed its much superior wisdom and experience. The harsh surroundings and threat of ambitious intruders have made the monarch realize the cruelty of his perilous position. Now the herd is traversing the vast Gobi Desert. If they keep feeding on one piece of land, the food resource will soon be depleted. In order to find new source of grass, they have to plod onward. Autumn is here, but the temperatures in the desert remain above 30 degrees Celsius. Under the scorching sunlight, the ground temperatures can reach around 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. The oppressive heat poses a fatal threat to many creatures but it can hardly affect the desert's most hardy resident, the toad-headed lizard. Found in central and southwestern Asia, this desert lizard has adapted to the endless winds in its habitat by evolving hardened eyelids to replace the lashes. When its body requires more heat, the lizard would lie on the ground to take in the sun's energy, modulating its temperatures within minutes. Then it will flail its nimble limbs to churn the sand and grits. So that its body is buried underneath, out of the harsh, scorching sunlight. With the global climate change, the river valley once crisscrossed with streams since time immemorial has dried up and become hot. But in central Gansu, there runs the Shul River. Its placid water has rolled on
for thousands of years through the basins and deserts. Only to be headed off by the Kumutag Desert and scatter into a dreamscape dotted by tiny lakes. The Halaki wetland serves as a barrier against the desert's eastward invasion. It had dried up for over three centuries until the recovery of the Shul River infused it with life again. The banks of Shul River are lined by luxuriant reeds and salt cedars. For the wild horses, this is a perfect grazing ground. Bringing up the rear is the elderly king. It must make sure that each and every of the herd arrives safe and sound, with no one left behind. Urged by its neighs and calls, the herd finally enters the wetland, blessed with abundant food and water. Autumn is here and they have to value every opportunity for feeding. But the percipient king soon realizes that his herd is not alone in the new turf. The lone male horse is lurking at a short distance. It hasn't given up. The young male doesn't give the old king much time to prepare. Once the time is right, it launches the second attempt. Ferocious as it may seem, the attack is not effective. King again repels the intruder. The crisis has passed, and the herd returns to its usual calm. However, the old king looks sullen and morose. The run-in just now has made him feel his advanced age. The herd didn't stop their progress. As the autumn deepens, the grass is drying up under the sun. The land is enclosed by rocky Yardang landform. In the cold seasons, survival will become harder. In anticipation of the winter, the herd must acquire a sufficient energy store. A mound with sheer bare sides is the definition of the word yarde in the Uyghur language. About 30 million years ago, this spot was under the ocean.
long and relentless geological action had heaved up the ocean floor to form a rolling landscape of hills. The constant erosion of flowing water had sculpted these sheer cliffs. Thousands of years of weathering had shaped them into stone pillars, stone drums and bridges. And the boundless yellow sands converged into an expanding desert. Equally old as the Yardang landform, in this vast desert is the only tall tree here the desert poplar. To survive in the desert, the desert poplar has come up with a wise strategy. In a desert poplar forest, while the trees seem to grow independently, actually, they have their roots linked together to form an extensive network underground. The well-developed root system is a way to share the water source. It has made the forest viable and ensured the continued multiplication of the species. The long drought periods have made the desert poplar realize the preciousness of every drop of water. In order to survive, it has to absorb from the saline alkali soils the salty and bitter underground water. For any plant species, such water is fatal to drink. It's no exception for the desert poplar, but the hardy tree has a special solution. The lesions on its trunk are dripping a brownish goo all year long. This is how the trees expel the saline alkali waste matter. This is widely known as desert poplar's teardrops. The king of the wild horse herd hopes to evade the pretender through constant moving. But the strategy doesn't work. The young male tails the herd doggedly. The old king now realizes what a troublesome rival he has to handle. The several clashes and constant moving has left it tired and exhausted. But the old king is aware a defeat will cost it the rule over the herd. Leave him to die alone. It must find a way to crush the opponent. This time, the old king strikes out first. Fortunately, each of its well-prepared attack is easily repelled by the young male. Other members of the herd have acutely sensed the shift in power. Perhaps this is the moment of truth. The young male has won the War of Endurance. This means that it is replacing the old king to become the herd's leader and take over all the females. Now proved a loser, the old king is forced to leave the herd. And its young son 
has to join the uncertain fate of exile. The old king and its young son wander away from the herd. In the distance, the new king has led its herd to embark on a new journey. its mouth to call, but only its young son answers. They are now two solitary figures under the vast sky. Solitude affects all. In the land of desolation lives another ancient and rare species. Bactrian camel. They are the only camels on earth living in the wild today. A vigilant creature, they prefer to stay deep in the desert and keep to themselves. They can store water and energy inside the humps to prepare for the spells of scarcity in the desert. Besides, their powerful kidneys also help them to conquer the harsh conditions. In the saline swamps, they can quench their thirst with the bitter water. In this, they bear a striking resemblance to the desert poplars. These wild camels have a distinctive menu. Their favorite dish is the succulent camel thorn. The hardy plant is found everywhere. Its needle-like stem thorns contain a rich supply of water. This is an important water source for animals. The leaves of desert poplars are an essential item on the camel's menu. As desert poplars pursue the underground water, the camel follows the poplars. The meager surface water and rich underground water poses a ruthless puzzle to the plants and animals around here. The camels have used their wisdom to turn the puzzle into an elixir to sustain their life. Unlike the camels, the old horse king plods on the path of survival with a sure-footed gait. Although it knows the location of each and every oasis and water source, without the herd, it cannot expect to procreate. The old king refuses to accept for his son and himself a solitary life of wandering. It is determined to take back his power. Before the endeavor, it has to prepare. After days of rest and recuperation, the old king takes its young son on the quest for its herd. The young son is already rearing to go. The battle will decide their fate. It will be his best coming of age gift.
This is a ferocious fight. The old king pulls out all stops in a bid to crush its opponent. But his aging body renders the assaults ineffective. The young son gets impatient and rushes to join the battle. But it never expects that the new king has made remarkable progress over the past few days. The young son's attacks are easily repelled with cunning maneuvers. King's strong physique allows it to thwart the old king's attacks with effortless grace. Now the new king finds the chance to launch a counterattack. Its fierce bites have clinched the final victory. Again, the old king and his young son are banished. The old king has realized that his era is gone. Its aging body can't resist the challenges from the next generation. But an even worse discovery awaits it. The young son has received a grievous wound during the battle. For wild horses, a fracture in the leg means death. In the harsh desert environment, the loss of physical mobility will deprive them of the access to enough food and water. This perhaps is an inaction of life cycle. The old king and its young son, like all creatures in the Western desert, to endure the harsh sun and bitter cold, as well as the lack of resources. They have to strive against many tests and the harsh rules of survival for their continued existence. For this reason, over the course of evolution, they have acquired the wisdom to adapt and the unconquerable will for life. The ancient desert in western Gansu, under the guardianship of humanity, will maintain its exuberant life force. <laughs>